This is Mark Summers from Summers Technical Services. We're going to do a SolidWorks tutorial to make a variable pitch helical spring. So let me toggle over here and take a look at my end result. So here's my spring. Uh, some of the parameters, the wire diameter is a sixteenth of an inch. The coil diameter is one inch. And it's got a variable pitch. The first and last revolutions of the spring have a sixteenth inch pitch to match the wire diameter. The uh, nominal pitch of the spring is a half an inch. So this pitch here in the center between these coils is a half inch pitch. And I've got a transition between the sixteenth inch pitch and a half inch pitch uh, very quickly. And the result is going to be a one and a half inch tall spring that's got the uh, top and bottom surfaces ground flat. So that's my end result. So let's take a look and see how we create this part. So I've started off with two sketches. The first sketch is a one inch diameter circle that will define that coil diameter. The second sketch is what I'll eventually sweep along the helical curve I create. Uh, it's along the coil diameter and there's the sixteenth of an inch diameter. So what I do to do my helical coil is I select that first sketch and say insert curve helix spiral. And when I do that, I'll get a pop-up box. It tells me I've got several options here, constant pitch, variable pitch. I can do pitch and revolution, height and revolution, lots of different combinations. So I want to do pitch and revolution. And I'm going to start off with a pitch, as I mentioned before, of 0.0625. And then after one revolution, it's still going to be 0.0625. And then I want to transition to a half inch pitch. And I don't quite know how quickly it's going to transition. So for now, I'll say it's a half a revolution. It'll transition. And then I'll go for another uh, couple of revolutions at a half inch pitch. So I'll bump up that up to three and a half. And uh, eventually I'm going to transition now to a sixteenth of an inch near the top. And I'll say that transitions in a half a half a revolution like I did at the top or at the bottom. And then finally at the end it will still be a sixteenth inch pitch. And it will go from four to five for that last revolution. So when I do that, you can see my spring, it gives me pointers where I'm at on each data point. So after one revolution, after the different numbers of revolutions, you can see where I'm at here. So 16th inch revolution for one, 16th inch pitch for one revolution, transitions to a half inch pitch after another half revolution, stays at a half inch pitch for two more revolutions, then it transitions down to a sixteenth of an inch in the same half inch, a half revolution that it did at the, top, at the bottom. And then the last uh, revolution makes the, uh, continues at a sixteenth of an inch. My problem is, since I don't know what these transitions are, my spring is not a half inch, one and a half inch tall. It's 1.406. So I need to change these values here to try to drive this number here to one and a half. So if I drop this down to like eighth of an inch, and I bump this one up an eighth of an inch, well, my number is getting closer to one and a half, but this is an iterative process is going to take all day. So I want to use Excel, try to solve that problem. So here I've recreated the pitch and the revolutions. And if I change this back to one and a half, and three and a half, looking at my spreadsheet, I can see the numbers are duplicated here. And these are just calculations. What I do is I uh, have a number here for transition revolutions. So I'm saying that the this revolution here is just one plus a half. And then the transition here is going to be this number is four minus that number. And then these height are calculated by the pitch times the number of revolutions. In this range here, I have to take the average of those two numbers for the average pitch, multiply by a half inch revolution, 
you get that additional height change there. So here I've just duplicated the calculations that SolidWorks is doing. So what I want to do is drive this number to one and a half. So to do that, I'll select that cell. I'll say data. Do a goal seek. If you're not familiar with Excel advanced tools, this is a pretty good tool to have. If I go to data, what if analysis and do a goal seek, I'm going to set that cell equal to one and a half by changing this transition revolution cell. When I say OK, it goes through and calculates, and it changes that number, drives it to force that to one and a half inches. So having that number, I can now come over here and type in the exact value I need for my spreadsheet. So remembering that number, I'll type in 1.2857. And down here, I'll type in 3.714. Actually, 7143. To get it exactly to one and a half. So I'll prove that. And now you can see if I bring my spreadsheet back over. You can see all I did was just type these revolutions in 1.286, 3.714. So when I do that, now my height is exactly one and a half inch tall, which is what I need. So now having my sketch, my sweep sketch, I'll control click the helical spiral, go to features, and just hit sweep boss slash base and approve that and there's my spring so the only thing lacking is my faces that I want to cut off so I want to get on my top plane make a sketch draw a circle at the origin and make it bigger than one plus a little bit. I'll just make it one and a quarter. And get out of the sketch. Select the sketch. Go to features. Extruded cut. And I'll cut through all going down. And that takes care of the bottom. Nice face there. Now I'll do the same thing on the top. Select the top plane. Put me in a offset plane. One and a half inches up. With that plane selected, I'll do another sketch. Make a circle at the origin. Give it a radius or a diameter. Again, of something bigger than one, I'll type in one and a quarter. Prove that sketch. Go back to features with that sketch selected. I'll do another extruded cut all the way through. Flip the direction, and there we go. So that takes care of my variable sweep. And using my Excel spreadsheet, I got the transition number of revolutions in that transition to make it such that it comes out exactly one and a half inch tall. So hopefully that was helpful tutorial. We will do future tutorials in SolidWorks and other 3D parametric CAD tools in the futures. Until then, Summers Technical Services signing off.